meet all of you. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go get him and introduce him to all of you. Give me one moment. He's in the office. <laughs> My friend, Mr. Grump, uh, I met him when I was in Colorado, and uh, he and I became good friends while we were over there. Uh, it's nice to have you with us, Mr. Grump. It's a real joy to see you today. Thank you, Preacher John. It's a real joy to be here with all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Grump, uh, where's Mrs. Grump this morning? I thought, I thought that she'd be here today. Mrs. Grump is busy with the farm. She's riding the tractor, she's riding the horses, and as usual, she always rides me. <laughs> Mr. Grump, uh, Mr. Grump, what I remember from Mrs. Grump, she's a sweetheart. She's an angel. Oh, oh, ah, uh, uh. Mr. Grump, what's the deal? Okay, Fox News, if you really want to know, Mr. Grump, you don't have to say anything. No, 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 that's okay, CNN. I know you want the facts. <laughs> Mr. Grump, if you want to share what's going on, that, that's okay. But if you don't, that's all right, too. No, no, I know inquiring minds want to know. If, if you want to share, we're family, Mr. Grump. Well, Mrs. Grump, God bless her. I love her so much. I only want the best for that lady. But I ask her to do this and ask her to do that, and no, nope, and no. Nope. <laughs> Would you like to give an example, Mr. Grump? Sure. I ask her to eat healthier, and no, nope, no. Nope. Well, Mr. Grump, that, that's a fair request, and I appreciate that you care about her health. Anything else? Yeah. I ask her to read her Bible, and no. Nope. Wow, I'm surprised. Um, Mrs. Grump, that doesn't sound like Mrs. Grump. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, I ask her to pray more. And no, nope. huh. well, your requests so far are very fair. I mean, eating right and, and reading the word and spending time with the Lord in prayer. I appreciate that. Is there anything else? Yeah, I ask her to be sweeter. And no. Nope. <laughs> All right, well, is there anything else? Yeah, I ask her to be more romantic and loving. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grubb, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, how many more requests do you have for, for Mrs. Grump? Uh, hmm. uh, two, uh, then there's the four, then there's the other two. Does anyone have a calculator? <laughs> Apparently you have a lot of requests for Mrs. Grump, huh? Yes! Uh, don't you think that's a lot? No! She's my wife! I can ask all the requests I want! <laughs> oh, Mr. Grump. Listen, I've got a test for you, Mr. Grump. No! Is it a needle? No, no, there's no needles involved. Uh, this, is, this is a request to hopefully uh, find the answer, to find the solution. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question, or several questions, and then you give a truthful answer. Will do, Preacher John. All right. Uh, you've asked her to uh, eat healthier. So how do you eat? As often as I can. Well, <laughs> Mr. Grump, that doesn't sound healthy either. Um, you've asked her to uh, read her Bible. Uh, how, how often do you read your Bible? Uh, mm, every blue moon. Every blue moon is not very often, Mr. Grump. And you've asked her to pray more. And that's an excellent request. But now, for example, how often do you pray? Every time I get in trouble with Mrs. Grump. <laughs> that might be every day then, I guess. And then, Mr. Grump, how about this? You've, you've asked Mrs. Grump to be sweet. What do you do to be sweet? Chew bubble gum. Well, <laughs> chewing bubble gum doesn't make you sweet. Hmm. 
Yes. Um, being sweet is by your actions, Mr. Grum. And you've asked her to be romantic. Well, what do you do to be romantic? I send her a card to remind her when my birthday is. <laughs> That's not being romantic. Being romantic is, you know, making dinner for her to uh, do something that's not serving yourself. It, you could get her flowers, you can uh, do all kinds of nice stuff. Huh. Now, let me tell you, Mr. Grum, from what I see, I think I have the answer for you. Let's hear it. You're asking Mrs. Grum to do all these things, but it doesn't sound like you're doing them yourself. So if you want Mrs. Grum to do all these things, I think you have to give a better example. Wow. Preacher John, you are the man with the answer. Well, you know, the Lord gave me wisdom from his word, and I, I appreciate everything that the good Lord has given me from his word, and that's what gives me wisdom. Um, I think, though, that you will do much better if you can give her that example that will inspire her. And I look at Jesus, and Jesus is my example. So whenever I want to find an answer, to find a solution, I look at how he behaved. I look, at, I look at how he taught the people. And when I recall how Jesus told the people to do this or commanded the people to do that, what did he do? He did it first. And he did it far beyond what we can ever do. When he told us to love one another, he did it. When he told us to forgive, he did it beyond what we can ever do. So Jesus gave us an example that inspires us to do these things. I appreciate that, Preacher John. Well, let's go to lunch. Well, uh, it's not time for lunch, uh, Mr. Grump. Um, I'm going to give a sermon right now. That wasn't the sermon? No, no we were just fellowshipping. Now I'm going to give the sermon. Does anyone have a pillow? <laughs> Mr. Grump, just teasing you, Preacher John. All right, good to hear. Then... Uh, I'll give you a chance to say goodbye or say hello to the people after church. All right, then? Will do. Nice meeting you all. See you after church. Don't take off for lunch. We have a sermon. I will not torture you with that every Sunday. I, I will only torture you with a puppet every blue moon, okay? <laughs> um, that wasn't the puppet I was using in Colorado. Um, I used this puppet from the church. But the character, Mr. Grump, is a character uh, I established while being in Colorado. Um, but I thank I think, uh, you all for allowing me to use your puppet from here. I do have a sermon, and this is the uh, introduction for the sermon I'm about to give today. When you look at uh, the insert, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Yes, if you turn to your insert and follow along with that, we hope that the light message that Mr. Grump and I gave will be you know, a, a proper introduction for the topic we're going to talk about this morning. If we could please turn to John chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, and I'd like you to turn and see it in print, please. The title of this morning's message is, Set the Right Example, It Will Inspire Others. Set the right example. It will inspire others. And when we turn to John 3, 16 and 17, what we see is this. Um, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The way we begin this sermon is to let us remember 
that the message this morning is not just for our congregation. It is for everyone that lives on this planet. The Lord Jesus opens his arms and welcomes anyone and everyone to be saved. And to complement that verse, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, we're given this in God's Word. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. There are times we look at, we think of God as a God who's going to judge, as a God who's going to bring His wrath down. And there will be a day. Yes, that's true. But our God loves every human being. Our God wants to save every human being. Our God is purposely slow to anger. He is patient. He's reaching His arms out. He's waiting and hoping that we will turn to Him. His hope is that everyone will acknowledge Him, accept Him as Savior, and turn from what they're doing that He doesn't approve of and turn to Him and follow Him. Now, if we could please turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, we're given more insight to God's plan to save people. God's hope, we just read in two different passages, is that He wants to save all people. He's slow in His wrath, slow in His anger, because He's hoping all people will turn to Him. What plan does He have to bring people to salvation? We look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Salt and light. You, Jesus speaking to us, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be, be, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. And again, Jesus is still speaking with us. And he says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Jesus is the light of the world. But when his Holy Spirit dwells within us, we become a tool for him. We become the light of the world. Jesus is speaking this. And again, let me begin at 14. You are the light of the world. He says to us, A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And, give, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds, your good deeds, your godly deeds, your holy deeds, and glorify your Father in heaven. How will people turn God to Him? By using us. He wants to use us as an example. He wants to use our lives to inspire people to turn to Him. Look back when it speaks of that house on the hill. Look at 14 again. Jesus said to the people, You are the light of the world. 
Because His Spirit dwells within us. Okay? Because He's speaking to His people. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Who built that house on a hill? Jesus did. Jesus purposely puts us as an example. Jesus purposely speaks of us as that house on a hill. Why? Because once we become a Christian, He wants to use us to be that example. Believe me, I understand. All of us feel short. All of us, not in height. All of us feel lacking. All of us have chips in our vase. But the Lord wants to use us. The Lord calls us to be perfect as our Father in Heaven is perfect. He calls us to excel. He calls us to be an example. <clears throat> Again, verse 14 says what? You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Once you call Jesus Savior, once you say, Lord, I want you to be my Savior and Lord and Master. I want to follow you. He takes you from living way far, lost, and He rebuilds you and puts you on the hill. So that way you can be the example for the world. I know we like to be a spectator Christian. I know we like to be in the background, hidden sometimes. I understand that. The Lord wants each of us to be a leader in our neighborhood, a leader in our family, a leader in our community of friends. He has called us, He has built us to be a house on a hill to be seen by all people. And it continues, and the Lord continues to speak of a lampstand. Okay? In verse 15, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Who here would ever turn on the light in your living room and put it behind your couch? That's not the purpose of a light. When you have a light in the living room or in the bedroom, you want it to be available. You want it to give sight for you when you walk in so you don't stumble. When your guests come in, you turn on the light so that way they can see where they're going. The light is not hidden under the couch or behind the couch or in the closet. The light is purposely there available so we can reach and we can see when we walk in. A lampstand different kind of light. The same purpose. Verse 15 says again, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl, or behind a couch, or in the closet, right? Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. The Lord Jesus, once He becomes your Savior, He changes your place from being in darkness, and His Spirit is within you, light, and He takes you from darkness and puts you in a place in the lampstand so you can be a blessing to all people who see you. God help us. God help us. That we can be a blessing to all people that see us. I'm not sure if, if you were able to put the two and two together with Mr. Grump and myself when we were speaking earlier. But when Mr. Grump was sharing with Mrs. Grump all the things he wants her to do for her good, he wasn't doing it himself. What a blessing he would have been for Mrs. Grump if he was doing them first. Eating right, reading his Bible, praying, right? being sweet, being more, more romantic, all these things he's asking of her, but he wasn't doing it himself. Do you see that? He could have been a blessing to her 
been an example for her, and then she followed. We are an example for the people who see us. Because once you become a believer, the Lord builds you on the hill. You're the house on the hill, called to be that example. You are the light in the lampstand that will benefit all others. The light source doesn't come from us. The light source comes from Him. So when you're a believer, His light dwells within you. And now we are called to be a blessing to all other people. I understand there are times we want to be a spectator. There are times we want to be uh, a wallflower. Jesus wants us to be a leader. This world needs leaders. This world is hungry for them. And what does it say in verse 16? In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We don't do our good works for the purpose to say, for the purpose that, for the purpose to let people say, good job. We don't do it for that purpose. But we should live a life consistent of good works, of good deeds. That's the byproduct of being a person following after Jesus. When you're following after Jesus, the byproduct of your life, the result of your life, is good works. That's the result of your life. That's not what saves you. Jesus saves us. But once Jesus becomes your Savior, your lifestyle becomes one of good works, good deeds. And when people see that, what happens? They then get inspired. They then acknowledge a living God. And then you can reach them. And then they'll listen. And then they'll follow the example you've given. Simply in closing, we have the knowledge. The Lord has given you the light. He has called you to be that light, that house on the hill. He has called you to be that lit light in the lampstand. This world is hungry for a real faith. Show them a real faith by living that life. People are going to India. People are going to the Middle East. People are going to Asia in search of God because they don't see it here. Is that for real? Do they not see God here? Or is it because we're not living the life here? Let us show them that our God is real. Let us, let us show them that Jesus is living in us by our lifestyle. Let them know that Jesus lives in you by your life. God help us to be a real living testimony by our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, if we could close with a word, and the altars are always open, if people need to pray, or if people want to, you know, give me a call through the week, if you all ever need prayer, if you all ever need someone to talk to, whatever it might be, we're here for you, okay? Uh, let's bow our heads, please. Our Father in Heaven, we love you. Our Father in Heaven, we know that you are God, and Lord, we are blessed with the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, dwelling within us. And Lord, let us show um, that you dwell within us by our lives. Let us show, Lord, that we truly are um, a, a Christian by our lives, by our words, by our actions. Help us, Lord, to show a living faith that will inspire people to turn to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn number 516. Hymn number 516. I have decided to follow Jesus. Please stand. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided.
faces so few people to see. Um, let's close with a word of prayer. Judy, would you close in prayer for us, please? Our Heavenly Father, how grateful we are that we have the freedom together in your house today. Praise your name. Father, we thank you for all the ones that have made this a truly worship service, Father. We pray now that each one of us would go our separate ways and bring us here at the next appointed time. We give you the praise and glory for all the, the uh, things that are happening Amen. Those children and young at heart that want to meet Mr. Crump, hang around. <laughs> <laughs>